was like, what the front door is this? But first, a moment from our sponsor. Let's go, Bosch. All right. It's me. Not Peter Pan. No. <laughs> On our way to a service call, we are in Rosedale, Queens. Homeowner. It's a multi-family dwelling. The owner, the absentee landlord, uh, has called us to fix some issues. We've got a leaky radiator. We have incomplete thermostat wiring. Apparently the chuck in a truck he hired, which he thought was a plumber, started to do some work and then walked off the job. So either he was inexperienced or this is a real ship show. So we'll see, we're right around the corner and hopefully I'll get some great video. Let's go see what's going on and make sure you smash that thumbs up button like you're smashing potatoes to make mashed potatoes. And consider subscribing. There's no cost or obligation. All right, let's go. How are you? Good. So you're the tenant, right? Not the landlord. No, yeah. You know what's wrong? Uh, with the system? Um, so they came and they changed the I think so. So they came and they changed this pump right here. Okay. Uh, that's the old one that they had. Alright. And then they started working up to like one to two days and then after that it just stopped entirely. They came back and they said that they had to like believe the line? Yeah, believe the line. They did it and it stopped the You have your own thermostat? Yeah, it's over okay here. But they said um Basically, that the upstairs controls the heat, so that this one won't work until we turn it off. That is correct. If the another thir the boiler has to have hot water mm -hmm. in order for it to circulate with hot water. Right, right. So if the boiler is cold and the other thermostat is off, mm -hmm. it's just circulating cold water. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. So he, I don't know why they changed the circulator, but. Okay. Raise it up a couple degrees. It's not doing anything. Yeah. It's still not doing anything. Oh, and they also installed that right here. <laughs> Apparently that was supposed to start to kind of go on the Here's our Taco 007 circulator. There's the relay. Here's the wire going to strap on Aquastat. This is thermostat for here. Okay. And this is other thermostat main floor okay all right oh thank you for getting the pipe doctor mask all right first things first let's take a look at what we're dispatched for all right no heat in basement thermostat wiring incomplete first floor radiator leaking all right so this is our relay for this circulator and the other side of this is here and we are not circulating okay now let's get a phillips screwdriver let's take off the screw on the top of the relay and let's see you pull that off okay and let's just for safety purposes turn power off and 
That did absolutely nothing. Uh, see if there's a switch on top of the staircase. Because I still have power to the relay. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, power is now off. So, let's just see what the front door they did here. So, we have, this is, there's power coming in. Here, it'd be nice if there's a switch there that just isolate this, but there isn't. So we have hot and neutral. We have neutral and normally, huh, normally open, normally closed. All right, so what they did wrong here is that they want the Aquastat to break steam on a call for heat on the basement zone. The way they have it now is that the Aquastat will open or break well, break or close based on a set point temperature. I haven't even looked at that yet, but logically, right now, the circulator will turn off or on. Let's just see what the this thing's wired. All right, so. And it's just st stuck on there. So we have the bottom and top. Let's see what that says. So R B opens, R W closes on temperature rise. So we want to we want to open on temperature rise. So R B is R B. Right now it's on W. See? We need to be in the one in the middle. R B. Alright. R and B opens. R and W closes. So we want to wire RB to break TT, leaving XX on the zone relay. Make sense? It doesn't have to make sense, you I can mean, be honest. I mean, I understand what you're trying to say. The, way, the, to... the way it's wired now is that it's an RW. Right now it's for RW, so mm -hmm. RW. So when it reaches 140 degrees, it's going to power the circulator, right? Mm -hmm. That's it. It's not going to tell the boiler to turn on, right? Because I just have a thermostat wire going to the thermostat. That's mm -hmm. it. So the thermostat calls for heat, tells the relay to power on, right? But this will only... The circulator only power if there's 140 degrees there. <laughs> like this is like, like I said, a chuck and a truck. Yeah. Jack of all trades, master of none. He thought whoever did this thought that that was going to do the trick. Yeah, I guess. But we want this if we're going to keep the Aquastat where it is to minimize the, the cost of the job. We're going to that Aquastat. Let's set that to like 200. Uh -huh. Right? Because once there's steam there, it's going to kill boiler power. TT. We're not going to disturb the other TT, right, from the main thermostat. But if the basement thermostat is calling, it's going to, XX is going to turn TT onto the boiler until that aquastat breaks TT uh, okay. at temperature. Because okay. we don't want to create steam for the main zone. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course, there's no answer first floor tenant so let's leave a message hi good morning this is mike from the pipe doctor uh, we are right now working in the basement but i do need access to the first floor the landlord has made me aware that there's a leak on a radiator so if you could please uh come downstairs or let us in 516-3486 all right let me show you what we did i was gonna move Aquastat from the steam riser. All right. Yeah, we know that's not 24 inches. <laughs> and put it here, but there's no place to put it. All right. I'd like to put it there. But if the circulator ever were to malfunction, ooh. oh, Jesus Christ, a shark bite. <laughs> 
Oh, yeah. If the circulate ever were to fail, we'll never get temperature there. Well, we'll get temperature there, but I like it there better. I secured it. So it's not a little more tighter there. And now we're gonna run two wire from RB to over here. Okay. So I'm gonna take one of these bad boys. So insulators. wire and connect to RB. All right, so new two wire, R and B on the Aquastat, set to right around 180 degrees. Let's take the cover back on. And there's our, oh, oops, carefully with the capillary tubing. Okay, and put the cover back on and use the quarter inch driver. And screw that down. So Peter just screw that down with the quarter inch driver. Now that is going to be the means to break TT going to the boiler. All right now our line to circulator is going to go to number four. All right. Normally open. So number four normally open is line to circulator. And then one of these, we'll get to that next, is going to be XX going to TT. Have you smashed that thumbs up button? What do you think, uh, Peter Pan, did they? Hopefully. Make sure Hopefully. you do that now. And sharing is caring. And make sure you subscribe. Okay, we have RB right from there mm -hmm. two wire and i have one going to number five common right and the other wire is this white wire and that's going to this two conductor wago this is the wago lever connector 221 if you don't know what these are well you've you're in for a treat <laughs> link in the description box down below now I have another wire here, two wire, two conductor wire. That's going to the other Wago, I mean the Wago, and then to number six, which is normally open, All right? That's TT, These, this is TT to boil. So now this wire here, right? This wire here needs to go to TT, thermostat relay, All right? So let's go dig, let's hunt for that and dig that out. If I was a betting man, I would not be seeing this. But there it is, here is our Oh, Daniel's calling me. <laughs> the red wire broke while I was putzing with this. Um, this is, where does this go? See these wires? This is, what is this? This really needs to get the hell out of here. All right, well, I don't know why they brought line voltage, low voltage into a line voltage box but let's just clean it up. Okay, look what we have here. I took the low voltage wiring out of the, this uh, junction box, right, with the switch. This is thermostat. This is going to thermostat relay. My green, we had connected already. Maybe it's a nest, maybe it's not, but we're gonna leave that, it's common. I had a red and a white. Red and a white go into thermostat relay. I have this wire here, which is coming from XX down there. Right. So I'm gonna take this wire and go right here. And as you always know, I always make, I always have means of disabling thermostat and thermostat wiring externally from any junction box or behind any cover for ease of uh, future troubleshooting, right? So we're gonna take the red and the white and put that there and see if the boiler turns on. So hold that for a split sec. Let's take this. Let's make sure we have plenty there. And I don't have the, the Nipix wire strippers I'm just using the Klein. Neil knows, right? And if there's one thing that they're gonna hate about and they're gonna complain about that, right? Turn the switch on top of the base of stairs. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have power. Now, if I were to just touch these two together, right? 
it should close if that's not making steam. All right. So, hold that right there. White goes there. The red goes there. Now, if we duplicate a call for heat, all right, let's, oh, flat screwdriver. I could. Hmm, it's not doing anything, huh? We are, see? Let's test for continuity. Let's get the voltmeter. All right, as you can see, I have continuity there. All right, let's take our flat screwdriver. There it is. All right, let's lower. I see it's raised, or I forgot which one it is. Okay, so that, now it's open. Hmm. So right now we're closed because we are above 120 degrees, all right? Okay. So let's set this to 180. So now let's see if we have continuity with the thermostat, right? Which we do now, you see? This thermostat on the wall requires a C-wire. It hasn't energized yet, right? Mm -hmm. So if I take my red wire and put it onto X that, oh, it just turned off. Why did that just turn off the thermostat? See that? Just turned off. What's that thermostat set to? What is it reading? Uh, reading 76 set to 76. Where is it? Okay. Okay. Now, we're going to hook up our aquastat to one terminal and the other one to the weight. All right. Now, when I connect this red wire to here, the circular will, will get powered. thing is I don't I don't hear her doing anything <laughs> I don't hear her doing anything I think the circulator is uh is seized let's say um let's disconnect that I think the circulator is kaput and look at this shark bite see this look at that yeah it's scary very, very scary. All right, so we're just gonna make sure that our line is clear. So take the pressure from the water heater. Don't try this at home. Bringing it to that side. We're gonna close, this? To, yeah, close that valve there. Open that. Lefty, loosey, righty, tidy. I saw what you just tried to do. Nothing's coming out of it, right? No. Oh. A lot of cocky. Look at all that cocky. It's coming out? Yeah, but not with pressure though. All right, now I take a flat screwdriver and this is closed, right? We open this. Okay. It would be nice if this was here, but it's not because now water wants to go in the path of least resistance and that could be back to the boiler. So we are, we're moving a little bit, but let's see what happens. Coming out with more pressure? Yep. Yeah, but we're also raising the boiler level as well at the same time. See that? A lot of cocky in there. Water's filthy. Water's filthy. All right. It don't matter. She ain't moving water. She ain't moving water. If you listen very carefully, the circulator seized up. The impeller's not moving. The impeller's not moving. Hi, good morning. This is Mike from the Pipe Doctor Plumbing and Eating. Yes, good morning, Mike. How are you? Hi, how today? are you? I was um, I'm doing well, thanks. good. I uh, hope all is well. Happy New Year, by the way. 
So I'm, I, I, have, I haven't made it my way to the first floor yet, but I wanted to give you uh, what's going on so far. Uh, up until this phone call, I thought it was just simple of rewiring of an inappropriately wired and improperly wired Aquastat that someone else installed, which the way it was put in, it's, it would never work. I don't know what they were thinking, but uh, nonetheless, I fixed that and I figured I'd probably be here about an hour, but obviously I'm going to be here a little longer than an hour. So I got the wiring all situated. So the thermostat turns on the zone in the basement, turns on the boiler, turns the boiler off if it gets too hot. But the problem is the circulator is not circulating water for the basement zone and i know that at one point in the past this has been replaced the circulator because there's one sitting on the floor in front of the boiler <laughs> right so question for you is how old is this circulator is that the pump well well it's called a circulator but yeah yes for you know layman's terms yes the pump the green thing so that circulator was just changed like last month Okay, so so as of right now, it is seized. Either there's something blocking the impeller from freely moving, or it's it's kaput. So at this point, this is when I and I make the phone call if, if the homeowner is not present, and I say, listen, if I gotta take this circulator out, um, we could try clearing it. But at that point, there's no warranty or guarantee. I'm not I'm not replacing the circulator if, if that works. But just so we're all on the same page, so. And also the way it's connected, you know, it's just they're using, you know, shark bite fittings, which, you know, it's a disaster waiting to happen with this thing, though. But um, normally, you know, this is a, at this point, you, you know, we recommend replacing the circulator normally, okay. but okay. it's entirely up to you. You know, there may be something stuck in the impeller. If there is and I clear it, you know, you're good until it, it doesn't, you know, gets blocked up again. And there may be some debris, you know, or sediment and, you know, crap inside the bottom of the boiler, which is interfering that. But it's, it's, this is, you know, again, I don't know what kind of maintenance history has been done on this boiler. But if there is, you know, sediment and there's pieces of, you know, old steel piping making its way to the bottom of the boiler, obviously the circuit is going to want to suck it in. And if a piece of fragment gets stuck in the impeller, now we have, you know, back where we started from. So... Yeah, so I did do, uh, I, the person before you, uh, we did do some maintenance on the boiler. Um, how much is the cost for the piece, number one? I don't know if you can give me that information off the top of your head. And then at, the, at your hourly rate, how many hours would it take to replace the, the pump? Um, well, I should, you know, if you told me to replace the pump now, I'm, I'm not here that much longer. Again, I don't know what's going on upstairs because I know there's a leak from a radiator on the second floor. But, you know, right now I've just spent the last, you know, almost an hour just dedicated to just re uh, rewiring and making sure that's fine, which it is. It's just now I'm not circulating water. So replacing the circulator, you know, we have, you know, about another hour of labor and, um, you know, go from there. But I, I would have to look up the price for it in, on our on our price book. But. Let me uh, let me see if I could, you know, if it's only a week old, let me see if I can clear the impeller, you know, and save you that expense. And that way you're just talking about labor, you know. Um, sure. Also, I would like to I would like to eliminate, you know, there's a shark bite fitting here. I'm, I, I don't want to confuse you if you I don't even know if you know what one is, but, you know, it shouldn't be there. You know, and it's like literally we, we have a piece of plastic holding up the circulator and the piping. You know, and if this thing breaks off, you know, you're emptying the boiler out into the basement. Seriously. Okay, so I would, you know, that should be, you know, a solid, a more solid connection. If ideally, if I had a, a flange for the circulator with a valve, uh, even better. So I don't know. Let me see if I could salvage it. Let me see if I could salvage the circulator and we'll go from there. Okay. And then also upstairs, you have the leaking radiator. So that's on the first floor. Yes. And then... The thermostat, um, I don't, the person that was working before said that he had to finish wiring. Which thermostat? I'm not sure. You're going to see that there's a, there's a Honeywell thermostat. In the basement? The first floor. Oh, first floor. The first floor. Okay, all right, we'll take a look at that as well then. All right, so let me just, okay. let me just spend a little more time here and hopefully I get the circuit up and running for you. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right. Discussed options. Let's close that valve. Mm -hmm. Let's um, let's see if we can spin the free this the circulator. All right, put the bucket right here. Mm -hmm. 
ideally, you know what would be nice right now? Ideally, circulate a flange with integrated drain to eliminate that. Let's go to the truck. Don't you know that it's always in the truck? Take a look. Behind the furnace cement. <laughs> yeah, don't even ask what electric water heater element is doing in my truck. There's three quarter inch uh, mixing valve. Here is three quarter press with rotating flange. Oh no, it doesn't have the drain. High velocity, mother effer. All right, I wish it had the drain on it. Take that. Mm -hmm. We need to add, we need to add a T with the drain on the other side. No, but we're gonna use that. We'll be all right. We're gonna use that to eliminate the shark bite. So get three quarter inch press jaw on the machine. Where's that flat screwdriver? Where's the flat screwdriver? There it is, sitting in cocky. Okay, let's see. Oh, she moves. All right, see how she moves there? Okay, now, I'm just gonna set that just like that. We're gonna see if this thing turns on and we have power. Stay by the switch? Yep, stay by the switch. Just flip it on for a brief second. I'm gonna see if this thing kicks on. Got switch on? Yeah. All right, hold on. Turn it off. What's the thermostat set to? 100. 100. Peter. Uh, the thermostat, I'm trying to turn it on right now. Oh, it's off. Yeah. Ah, that's right. All right, now we jumped out, TT. All right, flip it on for a second. Let's see what happens. Split second. I just want to see if the circulator powers up. On off? Yeah, this, you'll, you'll hear me say something. You got it on? Yeah, it's on now. The switch? Yeah, it's on. Why am I not calling? Oh, now what the hell's up wrong? I am an idiot. Do you know that? All right. Flip that switch on. Mm -hmm. I'm jumping out TT like it's going to do something. All right. Here goes nothing. No. No, nothing out of the circulator. Circulator is seized. All right, turn it off. All right. I spun around the head of the circulator because this needs to be pointed up. That's what it says in the manual. This needs to point it up and never, ever, ever is the body up like that vertically. All right, we'll get air stuck in there. Now I'm using my little ratcheting wrench here to tighten up the webstone circulation flange, and then we're gonna press it onto there. Okay. Now, that's all tight there. I don't know what a lot of you guys are saying. Hey, Mikey Pipes, what are you doing using that ECM circulator there? It's just gonna foul up. Yeah, in a few years. All right, it's not a BNG 100. And if you factor in the price of a BNG 100, how long that'll last, you know, because you know no one's oiling that circulator. Yeah. You might as well just put this in. Absentee landlord, it'll last, I guarantee, 24 months. All valves open. Let's open up this one. Open up that one. Okay. Now let's just open up this, open up the drain there and close the ball valve. Oh, I got some shit coming out of it? Oh yeah. Good. Open up that, close the bull valve, and let's do a little purge. Water coming out of there? Yep. With pressure? Good. Decent amount of pressure. Let's try to get that clean as possible. Let this run for a little bit. Make sure we have no leaks. Make sure we clean off our tools with a, a rag. Yeah. The shark bite. What the hell are these people thinking? All right, 
Watch the water level. Let me close this. We don't want to overfill the boiler. Good. Still draining. Good. We'll bring that down to three quarters full in the side class. All right, so now our circulator is on and running. Boiler is, is uh, calling. And my strap on Aquaset set for 200. Let's lower that down a little bit. turns off the boiler but does not turn off the circulator okay so let's raise this back up all right i'll set that to around 160 170 and now peter pan the basement thermostat controls the boiler and the aquastat breaks on temperature rise so we don't make steam on the rest of the house smart hope you enjoyed that video again it shows you the quality of work that hacks bring us which equals stacks of cash pay me deep 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 oh my god i don't know what the guy was thinking the aquastat was going to break circulator power that makes a lot of sense it really does <laughs> makes perfect sense can't you see? It all makes perfect sense. All right, guys. Be well. God bless. Stay safe.